Hi, I'm Deborah Bringleson, the founder of the Quantum Results Formula. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you the formula that people just like you in 17 countries are using to transform their lives. I'm going to reveal the exact formula that I used to rock Richard Branson. Before we met, he was a very hard no to doing business with my clients. But he didn't know about my secret sauce. He was so wowed that he ended up signing a deal worth more than $300 million in annual revenue. Imagine if you had that secret and you or your salespeople could make more in just one sale than in all of last year. Thursday morning, I woke up and everything felt different. And all of a sudden it's like, I got to call Deborah. I think I actually shifted lifeline. A few hours later on Thursday, I made the biggest art sale of my life. I think I sold as much art in two hours as I did all of last year together. What if you could break the false ceiling you have on your income and your life and make so much money that to celebrate you rent a private island in Belize with a private chef? You're probably living smaller than you think. Nothing's not possible. Anything's possible, whether it's a business goal, whether it's a personal goal, whether it's renting a private island. One of the things that we were able to do is confidently more than double our prices. Do I want to go from making 10K a month to 100K a month to a million a month? This stuff really works. Deborah just shifted me. To learn how to do it yourself, stick around because today I'm going to reveal all of that and so much more. Tell me, is everybody pumped? Are you ready to have a really great night tonight? Because I have to tell you, I'm really excited about what we're going to do tonight. I've talked to some of you in advance, and I know you've got some big things planned for 2024. So is everybody excited tonight? Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. So, so many people come to me and they say, hey, you know, I've got this business and I thought that running my own business was going to be the big, exciting thing that happened in my life and I'm struggling. I'm not making the money that I want to make and I'm thinking about going and getting a job again. And here's the thing, the running a business can be difficult, but one of the things that I find that so many people do that make it even more difficult is they're not having the right conversations with their ideal buyers. First of all, most people don't know who their ideal buyers are and they don't know what to say to their ideal buyers because they don't know what they their ideal buyers care about. And that's a big part of what we're gonna talk about tonight. So, you know, you know this, as a business owner and a CEO, the pressure that you are under is immense. And being a CEO is very lonely. I was a CEO for many years. And one of the things that I always struggled with at that time was there was nobody to talk to. I mean, you can't talk to your competition, obviously. If you have a board of directors, which I did at the time, I couldn't talk to them because they expected me to have all of the answers and the staff expected me to have all of the answers. And you, there's just, you don't know who to trust. It's very lonely being a CEO. Well, you know what? I want that to stop tonight because I want you to feel like you can trust me and you're not alone because I'm here to help you. So let's start with some facts about what's happening in the business world right now. First of all, your the buyers have changed in the last few years. They are spending a lot more time researching purchases. They're not just going out and just buying. They're really spending a lot of time and energy trying to figure out what the best choice is and if they even want to buy at all. And a lot of CEOs, 76% of CEOs, according to Deloitte, are saying right now that they're worried about an impending recession, and that's affecting buying choices. But here's the real key, because, you know, some of those things you can't control, but the real key, the part that you can control, is that 90 to 97% of your prospects are buying from someone else. And I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to actually show you the map. But what that means for you is that 90 to 97% of your revenue is down the drain before you even start. Do you get that? 
your revenue, let's, let's say, let's be generous and say you're making your money out of 10% of your potential market. That means that 90% of your potential revenue, you're not even touching because those people aren't hearing you. And as I talk to CEOs and the research that's been done, only 6% of CEOs think they have what it takes to make it through this. And, and I'm curious, are any of you feeling some of that yourself? Like, gee, I don't know, do I have what it takes to make my business succeed? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So today we're going to talk about, this is, this is a three-day class. It's an hour a day for three days. Today we're going to talk about the, the solution, how to stop losing 90% of your revenue and really own your market. And what I say to all of my clients and students, don't play in your market. Don't participate in your market. Own it. Whatever it is that you're offering, you want when somebody thinks, I need that, you want your name or your company to immediately come to mind. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about how to make that solution work for you. So today's the solution. All right, great, Deborah. That's a nice solution. But how do I really make it work in my personal business? We're going to talk about that tomorrow, how to get out of the marketing death trap and into what I call the iron triangle, where you're in control of your leads, your sales, and your revenue. And then the third day, we're going to talk about how to make it easy because we don't want to be working those, you know, 70, 80 hour work weeks. We want to have a life too, because I believe, actually, I don't just believe this. I know it, your life. And I mean that your life is meant to be easy, joyful, abundant, and fun. And so many of the CEOs and business owners that I encounter on a regular basis they're not having that. They're not having a great life. They're not having a great business, a lot of them, but they're also really not having a great life. So what if you could be a CEO who gets control of your company, who saves time and increases their revenue by 100%, which is very doable. I mean, a lot of people will say, well, I can't grow my revenue 100% in a short time. Yeah, you can. I'm going to show you today how you can forex your revenue in maybe six months. Reduce your stress at the same time. Get your health back. Did you know CEOs are at a higher risk? CEOs and business owners are at a higher risk for things like stroke and premature death. We're going to talk about reducing your stress so you can enjoy your life too. And have great relationships without doing all the work yourself. So what do I call this the $13 million formula? Well, the first company that I ever used this with was about 30 years ago. And they at the board of directors brought me in because they were literally trying to decide, are we going to turn the lights off and call it over? And it was a company that they were making about $56,000 a year. And when we finished working together, they had grown their revenue, their annual revenue to $13 million. So whatever you're sitting on in your bank account, trust me, get ready to make it grow. And here are just a couple of really quick examples. You know, that was 30 years ago. In the last 30 years, I've perfected the formula. It's significantly more powerful now than it was then. Um, this is John. He has a small little um, educational company. In six months, he 10 x his leads, his sales, and his revenue. And he gets to spend a lot of time with his family, which is what he really wanted. So that's a small little company. But the this formula that we're going to talk about actually works for big behemoths like Discovery. Um, it's much harder to turn the Titanic than it is a little tiny boat. And Discovery, uh, they grew their revenue 110% in 10 months, which is pretty significant for a massive company. And as I said, what I want for you is to have that freedom of having a great company that gives you the life that you want so you can actually leave your business every once in a while and go enjoy that life. 
But as we're starting, one of the things that I want you to understand is the results that you're we're talking about today, they may not be typical. I, I know some of you, but I don't know most of you. And I don't know what your company does or how well you can, or even if you will implement what I'm going to teach you. It does take effort and persistence. And, you know, with any business, there's always a chance of things not working out. So I'm in no way promising what you can do with what I'm teaching you here today. But I am telling you that there are hundreds of companies mm -hmm. in 17 countries who mm -hmm. are using what you're going to learn today and making it work for them. Okay, so what if you could have that set steady stream that allows you to have a profitable business and a life of freedom? I mean, that's what I want. I want freedom. I want freedom to travel the world and have fun. So if you're a business owner or CEO, what we're going to talk about today is getting control of your company, stopping the endless pressure and stress that's ruining your life and maybe your health. Stop playing in your market and really own it so that you're not worried about your competition and have that real freedom, you know, a massively successful business that runs smoothly without you and more money, less stress and more fun. How does that sound? Does that sound good to everyone? No? Absolutely great. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, guess what? If that sounds good to you, you're in the right place. But, and I want you to be honest with yourself so you can be honest with me too. If you're one of those people who believes in, you know, we've always done it this way, or you've already set, you know, you're, you're saying, well, I've already tried that, or I already know this, you know, you're going to see some things today and you're going to go, oh, oh, I, I know this. I've seen it. Oh, I, I read that in a book. Well, I want you to stop for a minute and say to yourself, okay, you may have seen something here before, but how many, how many hundreds of thousands of dollars or more have you made using what you've seen here? So just because you've seen it before doesn't mean that you know how to make it successful. And that's what I want. Okay. So if you're one of those people, you believe, you know, oh, life's a struggle, running a business is hard, or you're unwilling to take on a 100% responsibility for your success because you have the power, you have all the power. And if you're unwilling to listen to and follow the advice of an expert, then what I'm about to share with you, it's, you're, you're not the right fit. Today, I'm only speaking to like-minded business owners and CEOs who want to stop playing in their market and really own it, who want to forex their revenue, have a company that's more than a job, have a life that is joyful and fun, and to live without limits. Is that you? Yes. Yes. All right. So over these three days, we're going to talk about first today how to stop losing 90% of your revenue and own your market. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about getting out of the marketing death trap. That's, that's how to do it, how to make the formula work for you, get out of the marketing death trap and into the iron triangle, and how to have a massively successful business and a really great life. And I call that how to make it easy. Okay, so here's what you need to know that I know before we get started. As I said, over the past 30 years, I've perfected this very fast, highly effective profit producing formula that companies in 17 countries are using to grow their revenue while reducing stress and really get control of both their companies and their lives. More than one CEO has experienced more than 3000% growth in 12 months. And she regularly takes month-long or even longer holidays. Richard Branson, I used this formula on him, and he was a very hard no way. When I when he first encountered me as I was representing my clients, he was like, no, I'm not doing business with your clients. I'm a hard no. And this formula turned him around, savvy business person that he is. And he ended up signing a deal with my clients 
worth more than $300 million in annual revenue. So not just $300 million one time, $300 million over and over and over again. And I've successfully refined the formula for 30 years from companies, small companies, $56,000 to over $13 billion. And it's a little uncomfortable, sounds like bragging, but three times in Silicon Valley, they have made, named me most influential woman in business for using this formula and the success that it's produced. Wow. If I can do it, you can do it. But something you really need to understand about me, I believe in foundational success. I don't believe in one-shot wonders. They waste time. I call them, you know, silly little sparkly objects that people buy because they don't really understand what it takes to create a business. It's kind of like trying to build a house and not putting in a foundation first. So that's what we're going to do today. Sure, you may want to buy an app or you may want at some point to use AI, but we're going to get the foundation for success in first. I understand that if you've got employees who are working with you and they're not doing their jobs, that hurts you. We're going to learn how to deal with that so that you have a team that's working with you rather than doing it all yourself. And then I'm going to teach you about what I call, well, other consultants in the world call Deborah's secret sauce. They like to make fun of me because I have been using for 40 years um, what I call practical quantum physics and metaphysics. And that's where those crazy, what I call crazy, stupid results come in. I also want to get something straight. There is nothing for sale today. Okay, so there's not an offer. I want you to stay to the end because I want you to get really good stuff. And I'm going to coach you. We're going to do a, a teaching first. And then the last half of, of our time together is going to be, I'm going to coach you, ask questions. Um, if you do stay to the end, I do have a $3,000 gift for you if it's of interest to you. Okay, so right now you're probably doing things the hard way. You're doing a lot of the work and the decision making yourself. And you know what? Even if you don't have someone who's guiding you, just having someone to help you make decisions is massively value, valuable. So many of the business owners and CEOs that I work with are self-medicating with alcohol, food, and drugs. I don't know if that's you, but that's very common um, in some parts of the United States. Heroin actually is a huge drug of choice for CEOs. And if that's you, it's not necessary. What, whatever, whatever it is that you're doing to dull the stress, it's not necessary. Let's do something else, okay? So many people who are doing it on their own are wasting massive money on, you know, as I said, those one shot wonders, those shiny objects that don't produce results, or if they do, they're inconsistent. And you know, you're always spending, you're wasting money. And I hate that. And you're probably working far too many hours. You know, back before I really started implementing this and using it in my own life, I used to work 80 hours a week. I was exhausted. And that's not life. That's not what we're meant to do. We're meant to enjoy our lives. Another thing that you may be confronting, and I promise you that you are good enough. You may be asking, you know, am I good enough? A lot of us have been taught, I'm not good enough. You know, your parents, your teachers, your siblings may have said that you're not, and you're worried about that, and you're scared. And you maybe won't admit it even to yourself. And you're asking, okay, is this really all there is to life? I mean, I get up, I work, I come home, I eat something, I watch Netflix, I pay the bills. And tomorrow I get up and I do it all over again. Is that life? And you may be wishing that you had someone to talk to who could really help you find a solution. Well, I'm here. We're going to do that tonight. And maybe you're even saying, you know, I'm not a CEO. I'm an employee in my own company. I don't, I don't like it. 
and dreading the possibility that you'll never meet the business owner or the CEO that you could have been, but you never were. So there's a huge difference between making a product or providing a service and growing a business and building a team. And we're going to talk about that difference because it doesn't have to be that way. So here we are, the beginning of the solution, how to stop losing 90% of your revenue and own your market. And I'm going to quickly tell you a story about this woman. Her name's Nadia. And when she and I first met, she had gone a full 12 months without making any revenue. She hadn't made any money in her business for a full year. And by the time we were done, 12 months later, she had grown her business 3,546% over one year previous when she actually had been making money. And what she used is the formula that we're gonna we're gonna see right now. So let's let's start with this. In your workbooks, you probably see this pyramid and it reflects your potential buyers. And as we talk about buyers, understand there's a difference between all buyers, potential buyers and ideal buyers. Ideal buyers are the ones we really want. The ones who like, for me, an ideal buyer is someone who does the work, who doesn't argue with me every step of the way, who um, pays their bills on time. I'm sure you all probably like that, right? So who are your ideal buyers and as opposed to just general buyers? But when we look at a pool of ideal buyers, whether it's online or at somebody's giving a speech or you're just doing your marketing, one of the things that we understand is that only about 3% of your market really cares about what you're offering. 3%. So 97% don't care. And it, you know, this is if you're selling washing machines or digital products or coaching services, it doesn't matter what it is. Only about 3% of the market is buying right now. They're interested. And so if you're only, if you're only focused on that 3%, 97% of your, of your revenue, you're not even touching it. And who can answer this? Where's all of the competition for sales? Anyone? Oh, come on, somebody. What do you mean exactly by that, Deborah? Where's all the competition for sales? Do you mean my well, direct competition? We're losing it? Well, so if only 3% of the market, look at if you, it, let's say you're selling cars and only 3% of the market is interested in buying a car, everyone is fighting over that 3%. Nobody's fighting over the 97%, right? So you're, 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 you're all fighting over the tiny little pie instead of the entire available pie. And so that makes your job so much harder, okay? Yes. So when we look a little deeper at your potential buyers, 7% are open to it. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to buy a car right now. Never know. In the next six months or a year, I might be interested. So what? So as we continue this conversation forward, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that right now you are selling to 10% of your potential market. That still leaves 90% untouched. 90%, however much money you made in your business last year, that's only 10% of what you could, could have made. So what would that, if you had been able to touch your entire market, what would that have done for you? Well, let's look at this. So the next 30%, the, the, the bottom of the pyramid is divided into three equal parts of 30%. The first 30%, they're not thinking about it. You are not on their radar. They haven't even considered what you offer. The 
Next 30%, they think they're not interested. They don't know why they would care what you have to offer. And we're gonna talk about how to get them to care. And then the bottom 30% says, I am definitely not interested at all. Don't bother me with this. Like Richard Branson was when I was trying to get him to buy from my clients. He was like, no, absolutely not. I don't want to have anything to do with you for very specific reasons. He ended up buying. So when you understand that where your revenue is and why you're losing it, you can then start to turn that around. Okay, so let's do some really simple math. And anyone who knows me knows Deborah doesn't do math. So we're just gonna we're gonna make it really super simple. And in your workbook, there's a place for you to actually do your own math. So I highly recommend that you do that. But let's say right now you have a hundred leads a month out of the top 10% of that buying pyramid. Okay, everybody remember the buying pyramid, the top 10%, you get 100 leads a month. If you close 30 of those into buyers, each buyer representing $1,000, keeping it simple, 30 buyers times 1,000 is $30,000. Everybody with me so far? Yes. Okay. So now if you increase your leads from 100 to 400 leads, if you just dip down into that top 30, that top 30 that believes they're not interested in you, if you just get down into there and you keep the same rate of leads, which you will, with this formula, you'll actually have more leads. But let's just say you don't have any improvement. You just keep it at the same rate. So you, you go from 10% is 100 leads, an additional 30% means you have 400 leads. That increases your clients or your buyers from 30 to 120. And again, that number will go up, but we're just gonna pretend it's gonna be flat, okay? So you go from 30 buyers a month, which is $30,000 to 120 buyers a month, which is $120,000. How would an extra $90,000 a month feel to you? <laughs> would anyone hate that? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, so understand that that's just getting into that top 30% that you did that. So by making that one tiny little change and implementing it really well, your income was $360,000 and now it's 1.4 million. How do you feel about that? Sounds good. I don't believe it. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's let's go back to the the home seller, the woman that you saw before increased her revenue um over 3000%. So she was a home seller. She sold houses. And before she and I met, she'd made no money for 12 months. We've already been through that. And what we did was we did an analysis. I did an analysis of who her ideal buyers really were. Cause she didn't know she was just selling houses. You know, you've all seen those little um, magazines and stuff that's got pictures of pretty houses and whatever. And she was doing exactly that. She was focused on, um, oh, thank you, Andrea, for telling me that my camera is not on. It was. There, there you are. Okay, sorry about that. So, so she, she was focused on just doing what everybody else was doing, selling to that top 3%. Everybody was fighting over them. And so I did an analysis of her ideal buyers. And what I discovered that she didn't know was that her ideal buyers cared about things that weren't really related to a house. They were at a very high risk an especially high risk for premature death because of diabetes, heart disease, and their children were at a 300% increased risk for teen drug use and other aberrant behaviors. And as crazy as it sounds, we stopped 
saying, oh, look at our granite. And we've got these beautiful fixtures, aren't they nice? And we started talking about diabetes, heart disease, premature death, teen drug use. We researched who they were. We got into their hearts to understand what they really cared about. And we started talking to them about that. So we shot videos about premature death and how to prevent it. The latest research from Harvard, for example, that showed that being out in nature, her houses happened to be in a natural area, being out in nature decreased your risk of um, heart disease equal to many of the best drugs on the market. We started talking about that. Our brochures, when she would go to, you know, those little community events or her team would go to community events, the brochures that we, they would hand out were about heart attacks and dying and stroke. Not very light and frothy, not as fun as talking about granite, but remember, her ideal buyers didn't care about those things. When we did that, her revenue grew from $0 in a 12 month period to $602 million 12 months later. Hmm. Now, before you say, well, nobody's gonna be truly interested in that. So I provided all of this research to one of her salespeople that I trained and we were going out with all of this material and sh sharing it. And we had somebody come to look at a house and she had been trained by me and how to talk to the ideal buyers. And she said, oh, so when you're looking, are you looking for a place where, you know, your extended family can maybe come and spend time with you and things like that? And the guy said, um, well, you know, my dad, he died when he was 54 and um, when I was a lot younger and I'm turning 54 next year. And I'm really scared about what's gonna happen when I turn 54, will I die too? And who will take care of my family? So he was interested in what we were talking about. And then when you think about we talked about at the bottom of the buying pyramid, remember that bottom 30%, the really hard no's like Richard Branson, no, no way, I'm not even interested. So because of the research that we had, we knew what our ideal buyers potentially were going to care about. So um, we hosted a party in one of our properties and there are a bunch of people there that were, we invited ideal buyers and one of them was an investment banker. And I, had a sales and a few salespeople there that I had trained and we were playing a game to see who could make the most sales. And so I started talking with him, just his wife was wearing a hat and I like hats. And so we were chit chatting and I, I said to him, so what do you think about this development? Do you, you know, do you like the houses? And he was Swiss and he said, no, I think it's terrible. I've been watching it as they started it and it's it's going to fail. It's really terrible. And I, I just don't see it going anywhere. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. He didn't know that I was involved in what was going on. And so I, I said, you know, I read an article because I, had done my research and knew what I, our ideal buyers cared about. And I said, you know, I read an article that um, Sotheby's just released a report that instead of buying art right now, people are investing in, in, in properties rather than investing in art. And he said, oh, that's stupid. I've never heard anything so ridiculous. That's just really <laughs> stupid. And I said, oh, well, and, you know, we wrapped up the conversation. And so later, as I'm walking around, I noticed that he's talking to one of the salespeople that I had trained. And he said, well, you know, Sotheby's just re-released a report <laughs> saying that people are buying properties instead of buying investment art. He took what he told me was stupid and was sharing that information as his words of wisdom with someone that he didn't know was actually one of my salespeople. 
So for anyone who says, well, I'm only getting my revenue out of that top 3% because that's all I know what to do. And I don't believe that it's possible to get down into the bottom 30%. It is. If you know, if you truly know what your ideal buyers care about. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do to actually make it happen is you want to get cash in the door first. You want to start talking about talking to that low hanging fruit where those people who you're, if you're in the top 3%, maybe getting into that, the lower 7%. And I, I see Travis, you put a comment in the chat that you've seen the buying pyramid before. Sure. It, it's out there. Um, but you've never heard anyone explaining it like that. I hope that is helping all of you that you can stop the struggle that you're doing. So, so getting, getting down, just work on getting down into that next 7%. They're at least open to what you're talking about and then meet them where, meet your buyers where they are, not where you are. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you're selling a product and you're talking about your product, and we're going to get really deep into this tomorrow night, and you're talking about your product, they don't care about your product. I'm sorry to tell you that. They really don't. And they don't care about your service. They don't care about you. They don't care if you, how many years you've been in business. They don't care if you say, well, we treat our customers like family. They care about their pain and they care about you solving it. All right, like the people who ha had a propensity to dot premature death from all of these diseases. Or another really great example, I was working with an aerospace company and they were selling to companies in the aerospace industry, but the people that were making the buying decisions were actually supply chain distributors. Okay, so remember this, people make decisions. Sure, they're making business decisions, the best solutions for their company, but they're making decisions as people. So these supply chain managers had massively stressful jobs. They had to satisfy their company, their bosses in the company. They had to satisfy the people they were delivering to. They had all of these things that they were juggling. They, they had like 10 different entities that were constantly competing for their attention to be served. So the company that I was working with, they made products, machinery in the aerospace industry. Okay, so that was a tool, fine. But what they really cared about was when our company could tell them, look, you have 10 different things that you need to do and it makes your job impossible. We have a system in place that solves six of them. So their job went from 10 massively stressful things to do to four because we were taking care of it because we knew what they cared about. Sure. Yes. They wanted a product that worked, that didn't fall apart. Of course, that's the minimum. But when their job could get easier, they could deliver better on time with fewer problems. That was like heaven to them. So what is it that your ideal buyer really cares about and how can you meet them where they are, not where you are? The next thing is stop competing for those 3%. Sure, you're going to get them anyway if you do this, but you want to go after that bottom 30, 60, 90%. Because when you do that, it's going to make the top 3%, the top 10% want you even more. And, and we talked a few minutes ago about, all right, you're going to get more leads with this. There are more people who are going to be paying attention to you. Your close rate is also going to go up. We, in our example, we just said it was going to stay flat because that made the math easier. But when you are delivering so much that you've got more people interested in you, you're also going to get those people to want to buy from you more. So your close rate will go up, meaning your sales and your revenue go up. 
And you want to be the person that your buyers run to when they need help. Look, if they call you in the middle of the night, they're having a crisis, they really need something, and they know that you've got the answer, and they call you in the middle of the night or on a Sunday, and you give them the answer or the solution, when it's time to buy, are they going to go to somebody else or are they going to buy from you? They're going to buy from you, right? Yes. So what I want to do is I want to do some coaching. Um, I do want to remind you that on day two, we're going to talk about getting out of the marketing death trap and into the iron triangle. That's tomorrow. And then on day three, Thursday, we're going to talk about how to have a massively successful business and a great life. And we're going to do it by how do we actually meet our buyers where they are, not where we are. And here's just a, just to tease you a couple of quick examples that we used in the home buyer situation. So I want to jump into some coaching. I want you to think about your business. Ask me to help you right now. I'm willing to do that. And remember, I promised you the uh, little gift. If you're really wanting help, I have set aside a couple of slots to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about how to grow your business. We're, we'll talk about your biggest challenge right now and I will help you solve it. We'll, we'll get on the phone or on Zoom and we'll go through your business together. I'm gonna, I will set out a step-by-step -step plan for you that you can do to take what you're learning in this three days and actually make it work for you. And as I said, I, I don't have a whole lot of slots, but if you go to quantumresultsformula.com forward slash now, you can submit an application. It's not a sales pitch. It's a, I serious want to help you, but I want you to be serious too. Like, you know, let's be respectful of each other's time. Um, I'll give you everything I got as long as you're giving it everything that you've got. Okay. And yes, Laddie, um, there will be a recording. You, everybody will get to see that I forgot to turn on the share in the beginning, <laughs> but yes, there will be. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to jump into some coaching, ask me questions. Let me help you. I have an online marketing, I mean, drop shipping business where I don't actually talk to my clients in person. Okay. But you, how do you get clients currently? I don't. <laughs> That's okay. the thing. I don't know about marketing at all. So, okay. Okay. Well, so the first thing that you need to know is who you want to sell to. Who are your ideal buyers? And you have to put some thought into that. What are you selling? Who are the who are the people who might be interested in it? And you have to really get out of the box. Like, don't even have a box. For example, the the home seller that I was talking about, she was just, you know, marketing on granite and fixtures and things like that. So she was really tight, really limited. But when she thought when she understood who would benefit from what she was selling, then her whole world exploded. So How do you figure out who your ideal buyers would be. Well, you have to put some thought in it and who who would benefit from what you're selling? What are you what are you giving them? You're drop shipping what? Lots of different things. I have stickers. I have one store that's stickers. I have one store that's jigsaw puzzles. Um, let's see what other, I have a party planning website that I haven't really done too much with yet. And um, that's it so far. Social media marketing, which I don't really know about. So <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, stickers mostly. Okay. So what what you really need to decide is what you want to do who you want to be in the space and right now it sounds like you're kind of all over the place and by being all over the place you're not really serving anyone right so the first thing you really need you know like if you say well i have a social media marketing arm but i don't really know about social media marketing i'd say that's probably not the best place to start 
practicing my social media marketing on my own websites. Okay. But in terms of making money, think about what do you love to do? What are you good at? And who could benefit from what receiving what you have? That's where I would start. Yeah, it's just toys and games. Okay. Well, so you might want to start with <clears throat> children or a pa not children, parents. As your ideal buyers. And what do they care about? I I'll give you a great example. And Dion, I see you've got your hand up. Give, um, I'll, I'll get right to you. But um, I had a client, um, you've probably seen him on some of my YouTube videos. He is in this space that does sports training for children. And before he and I met, he was marketing to, to children to want to come and have sports training. And I said, well, first of all, who's got the wallet, the children or the parents? Right. So let's, let's talk to the parents. And, you know, he was talking about, you know, fitness and that's great. I, I think that's awesome. But when you're marketing to parents, what do parents care about? Well, well, one of the things we just, we had many, but one of them was, did you know that girls who are involved in sports, their chances of getting pregnant as a teenager is significantly reduced? Oh my. So when you talk about things that your buyer cares about, I mean, yeah, the kids want to go and have fun. That's great. I think that's great but they don't have a wallet. So the people who have the wallet, they want their children to be healthy and they want them to be safe. And what are some of the things that they what, that a parent would worry about with young children or teenagers? So you need to do the same thing with your business. And I'm talking to Beverly, but I'm talking to all of you. What is it? Are you marketing to the right person and are you talking to them about what they care about? My stickers will keep your kids off the streets. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dion. I you're saying that. I see. It's valid points. Thank you. Yeah. Dion, <laughs> how about you? Yeah. So I, I think I know what my ICA cares about but listening to you I'm just trying to think if it's more so I work with um, professional women that are over 40 and that's dealing with menopausal symptoms so weight gain is a big one sleep issues energy all of that using natural protocols lifestyle and so and so Mm -hmm. But are you saying that they might care about, like, like, so what I think they care about is like, I want to feel better. I want to drop this weight that's due to my decrease in estrogen and all these different hormonal changes. I just want to feel better. I want to feel like myself again. I want to regain my energy. I want to be able to sleep and wake up in the morning and be productive. Mm -hmm. That's what I think they care about. Mm -hmm. um, are you saying that it might be deeper than that? Absolutely. That I need to kind of go a little bit deeper, like what's under that, what's under that, what's under that. What's under that? Yes. You you've heard that phrase. <laughs> I've heard that phrase. What absolutely what what is under that? You know, why do they want to have these things back? Why do they want to have better sleep? Um, you know, it could be it, it's affecting their mood and that they are it's a their mood is affecting their relationships. You're not the, you know, they've got the hormones going on. Um, when I went through this personally, there were times when I was in such a rage for no reason. It's like, where the hell did that come from? Right. And that affects your relationships. It affects your personal relationships. It affects your business relationships. So, you know, are they afraid of losing their spouse? because they have these crazy things going on with their body that they don't understand. And what's under that even, you know, so you've got women who are going through menopause who are having all of these symptoms, but they may be the tip of the iceberg for, you know, even in the business world, 
I have people who come to me and they're worried about losing their marriage because of their business. So do you have women who are afraid of losing their marriage because of menopausal symptoms? That wouldn't surprise me. Right. So is the thing now that we the marketing strategy should be built around what is it that they care about? Like Absolutely. losing my spouse. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And tomorrow we will talk about how you specifically uncover them. Like what they you care transition about. from what they care about to your product. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you have to make that connection. You can't just say, like, for example, you know, I wouldn't say to every home seller out there, start marketing on diabetes, heart disease, and teen drug use. Because you don't know that that's something your particular market cares about, right? That was their particular market. So you have to understand what your particular market cares about. And part of what we'll talk about tomorrow night too, is that will help you so that you're not competing on price and constantly having to lower your prices. You can actually charge more. That video that I showed you when we started that you didn't get to see, one of the things that Ryan talked about, he was, he's, he's the guy who um, works with teenagers in sports training. And one of the things that he said that you maybe didn't hear was, they confidently more than doubled their prices when they got out of the iron or out of the marketing death trap, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Did that, that answer your question? Yes. Yes. It's just, it's just forcing me now to really um, go, go a little bit deeper because I have been struggling with marketing. I have been struggling with actually attracting the people that I, I want to attract my ICA. And um, so I, I think the marketing strategy has to be tuned. Yeah. Yeah. I would encourage you to go through the workbook and actually do your own math and then think about, and again, we'll, we'll get deeper into this part tomorrow. Oh, you did, you did your own math. Okay. So what, you know, but the numbers aren't working for me. <laughs> what, what do you mean? They're not working. No, no, no. I mean, in terms of leads coming in, like it, it's, yeah, it's, um, okay. Not, not the, not the formula numbers, my oh. actual numbers in terms of how the conversion Okay. Results. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would forexing those numbers be better? Of course. I yeah. Mean, that's why we're all here, right? Yeah. <laughs> I okay. think so. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to do than you think. If I was putting out ads for something that you had no interest in, you're not going to pay attention. You're not going to become a lead. But if I talk to you about something that you care about, like you're a business owner, 90 plus percent of business owners struggle with leads. If I talk to you about how to increase your leads and more importantly, how to have more money, that's going to be something that you care about. Yeah. And that's what you want to do for your ideal buyers. In the workbook that you received, you there are some charts in there that walks you through your figuring out who your ideal buyers are and what they care about. Take a look at those charts and go through them. Follow the instructions. You're going to, you know, at some point you're going to go, oh. I, you know what, I've done this avatar stuff and I don't believe in avatar stuff. I don't, you know, sure, it's nice to know what age they are and where they live and things like that. But the real thing that you want to care about is what they care about. And you want to, when they're laying in bed, no one is laying in bed saying, oh, I wish I could find that product. And I'm not going to say any more because there are three things they care about, but I'm going to tell you that tomorrow night. There are only three things that your ideal buyers care about. Only. 
And I'll tell you that tomorrow night. Is it in the workbook? Oh, it is. I saw it. Is your girl? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I won't, I won't say anything. <laughs> Peeking ahead. Any other questions? Was this worth it tonight? Was this worth an hour? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, for sure. For I've sure. Not already. Yep. Even if it took one thing away, I think it was worth it. And I did. So totally. Okay. All right. Excellent. Wheels are turning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So any other where questions? Will be able, where will we be able to find the recording of this? I'll send it out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, I'll email it out. Okay. Yes, Teodora. Hi, Deborah. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Hello. So thank you for tonight. It's been amazing. I was wondering if I could ask you a question about sales. Sure. And it's a little bit of a vulnerable question, but what attracted me to this um, was the quantum word. And I'm wondering what are like the workings behind coming from a needy place in business? How do you come from a place that's stable? I guess I don't understand the mechanics behind that. Okay. So a lot of us have, and we're, this is, this is actually what we're really going to get into in depth on Thursday in class three, because that's where mm -hmm. we start to make it easy because, you know, a lot of times um, we'll do a lot of the business stuff, like the home buyer that I was talking about, she and I had been working together for six to eight months and we'd done all of the business stuff. We've done the stuff that we're talking about tonight. We've, we had done the things that we're going to talk about tomorrow night. And we're six to eight months in and she still has not made a dime and I'm sweating. I'm like, you know, all right, what am I going to do? This, this can't be my first failure. And so I said to her, I think we need to work at the quantum level because I think you're blocking money, literally. And we all have blocks to success that in money that come to us from our parents. Some of it, it comes to us generationally. Like if we have grandparents or great grandparents who've been through the depression or they have, you know, beliefs that money is evil. A lot of those have gotten passed down both in terms of conversations, but they've also gotten passed down energetically. And so we need to clear those out. And and um, I hope you come back on Thursday because we're really going to talk about that a lot then. And it's vitally important. She and I met. Um, I So when I was first doing this, I'd been studying metaphysics and quantum physics and working with shaman and people like that around the world. And, and I'd been using it in my own life and with, you know, working with politicians and businesses and and I never told anyone because I was afraid that people would think I was kind of wacko and it would affect my credibility as a business consultant in that world. And I never really told anyone. And so finally um, with her, I said, you know, look, I think you're blocking money and I would like to work with you to clear that. And she said, okay, sure. And we did, we met on a Friday. I'll never forget. We met on a Friday and we went through it and we uncovered what it was and cleared it. And within eight days, she made $298 million, which was the first money she had made in gosh, 18 to 20 months. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's really important. And as I said, we'll, we'll have a whole class on that on Thursday. Thank you so much. I'm excited for Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So any other questions before we wrap up? Nope. Well, it was fun being with all of you tonight. And um, I put a link in the um, chat. If you want to schedule a time for a breakthrough call, you're welcome to do that. The link's in the chat. And I'm... Excited to see you all tomorrow night. Thank you, Deborah. Thank I love you. you.
I love, I love you all. Thank you, Deborah. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Yes. Tomorrow. Thank you. Bye bye. Great bye -bye. job. Yeah.